Surfing the web is time-consuming. When information is infinite, individual pieces of information are worth nothing. Charles Kuhn Kao said in an interview. I was so shocked when I got to know that Dr. Kao said it in 1999. With the popularization of internet entertainment, it was not until recent years that people slowly felt the pain of the internet. And as early as 23 years ago, the father of fiber optic saw the truth through the phenomenon. Although his innovations helped make possible the exchange of information on the internet, Dr. Kao said he did not spend a great deal of time online, and he offered a word of caution about the uses of his discoveries. Once again I was struck by the wisdom of the great man. On November 4, 2021, the picture on Google's homepage commemorates the 88th birthday of Charles Kuhn Kao, known as the father of optical fiber. Born in Shanghai, China, he is a permanent resident of Hong Kong, and Kao was a citizen of the United Kingdom and the United States. He was born on November 4, 1933 and died on September 23, 2018, at the age of 84. On the Google's homepage picture, the cartoon image of Kao stands behind the green fiber laser, and the data consisting of zero and one is transmitted from one end to the other. Google refers to Kao as a physicist and educator in the memorial. His innovations revolutionized global communications and laid the foundation for today's high-speed internet. In addition, he is a Nobel Prize winner. Charles Kuhn Kao's scientific research achievements have truly entered thousands of households and changed our lives. But in the early years, he was still a silly boy who was ridiculed for weirdo. Okay, in today's video, let's talk about Charles Kuhn Kao's life story. Charles Kuhn Kao, a researcher who perfected fiber optic communications in the 1960s, an advance that was credited with paving the way for the internet and was honored with the Nobel Prize in Physics. Dr. Kao grew up in Shanghai and, after the onset of the Chinese Communist Revolution, in Hong Kong. He was educated in England and conducted research across Europe and the United States in a career that made him known as the father of fiber optics. In 1948, Dr. Kao moved to Taiwan and Hong Kong successively with his father, and later was admitted to the University of Hong Kong. After graduation, he went to the UK to study alone. Since then, he has been doing scientific research abroad until he returned to Hong Kong to become the president of the University of Hong Kong. It can also be seen from Dr. Kao's experience that his fate actually followed his father. He was devoted to scientific research. Compared with China, Europe and the United States did have better scientific research conditions and environments at that time. This also explains to a certain extent the reason why Dr. Kao changed his nationality. He was working in Harlow, England, for a British subsidiary of the International Telephone and Telegraph Corporation in the 1960s when he made a surprising discovery about what he described as an old, old idea. The old idea, he said in a biographical sketch for the Nobel Prize, was the transmission of light through glass, a process long used, for entertainment, for decoration, for short distances for surgery, he noted, but not over the long distances required for telephony. Light passing through a rod of glass just fades out to nothing after a very short distance of a few feet, he explained. The new idea, credited to Dr. Kao and a colleague, was that the transmission of light could be improved enough to render existing copper wire communications technology obsolete. Nobody bought my ideas, Dr. Kao said in 1999. The prospect of producing something 1,000 times better than copper wire was very tempting. When you are young, you are fervent about the things you believe in. Working with the British engineer George Hockham, he found that if impurities were removed from glass, light would travel through it with staggering efficiency. The fibers, thinner than human hair, were cheap to manufacture. With their capacity to transmit large quantities of data, they allowed photographs, music and other information to be sent around the world nearly instantaneously. By the time Dr. Kao shared the Nobel Prize in 2009, the fiber optic network was the circulatory system that nourishes our communication society, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences said in a news release at the time. If we were to unravel all of the glass fibers that wind around the globe, we would get a single thread over 1 billion kilometers long, which is enough to encircle the globe more than 25,000 times, and is increasing by thousands of kilometers every hour. 
I think it was a very respectable bit of detective work as well as good theory and good fundamentals, he said of his contribution to the fiber optics field. So there was really nothing spectacular. The other portion of the Nobel went to Willard S. Boyle and George E. Smith, researchers who were credited with developing the technology undergirding digital photography. These inventions may have had a greater impact on humanity than any others in the last half century, H. Frederick Diller, director of the American Institute of Physics, told reporters when the prize was announced. Dr. Cow sought to share credit with those who had applied his work to real-world uses in communication. I'm an engineer, so my real purpose is something that is useful, he said in a 2004 interview with the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. I still feel that it is not the invention of something that is important. It is how we can utilize that, then, to improve life that is important. Charles Kyung Kao was born to a landowning family in Shanghai on November 4, 1933. His father was a judge, and his mother was a poet. He enjoyed what he described as a very pampered and protected life, with nursemaids and private tutors and recalled meeting his parents as if for a daily royal audience. Dr. Cao had an early, even dangerously early, interest in chemistry that once led him to accidentally burn his brother's pants with acid. My parents were furious and confiscated all my chemicals, including the cyanide, he said in his Nobel biographical sketch. I wonder where they disposed of the stuff. After spending the post-World War II years in Hong Kong, Dr. Cao moved to Britain for his university studies in electrical engineering. He received a bachelor's degree from Woolwich Polytechnic, now part of the University of Greenwich, in 1957, and a PhD from University College London in 1965. In addition to his work with the Standard Telecommunication Laboratories, the ITT subsidiary in Harlow, England, Dr. Cow served as ITT's executive scientist in the 1980s. He had a long association with the Chinese University of Hong Kong, where he helped found what became the Electronic Engineering Department and served as Vice-Chancellor from 1987 to 1996. Dr. Cao, who held dual British-US citizenship, received the Japan Prize in 1996. He had already begun his descent into Alzheimer's disease when he was awarded the Nobel. Survivors include his wife of more than six decades, Gwen Cao, with whom he had two children. Overall, Dr. Cao was not only a pioneering researcher, but also a dedicated educator. Beginning in 1987, he served as the principal of the Chinese University of Hong Kong for nearly 10 years and founded the Hong Kong Independent Schools Foundation. Dr. Cao's landmark research in the 1960s won him the 2009 Nobel Prize in Physics and paved the way for the more than 1.4 billion kilometers of fiber optic cables that transmit vast amounts of data across the globe today. Well, thanks for listening. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas. Please keep following our channel and like our videos. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.